G'day, I'm Jake from Make Science Fun. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to look at DC motors or direct current motors. Motors that can be run from a battery. I'm running them from a power pack, but you could run them from a 6 volt battery probably, or even a 12 volt battery. Now these motors were produced by students of mine uh, for a project for their final year 12 um, uh, construction project for physics. And they've made some wonderful motors, and so today we're going to look at the features of these motors, and I'm going to give suggestions on how to make uh, you know, a good DC motor. I'm going to give you some hints and trips, <laughs> hints and tips, and uh, maybe look at some things that maybe could be done better uh, for improvement, uh, so that your motor works better if you happen to be building one. So here's a fantastic example. It's got uh, two coils. It's got two coils. Uh, perpendicular to each other. It's made from a nice piece of wood. The, the wood bearing holders are screwed in, glued and screwed. The magnet holders are nice and firm. Uh, it's made from some uh, wooden dowel, uh, which goes into a uh, like a skateboard bearing uh, there. And it's got lots of coils, enamelled copper coils. It's got only two very small magnets. Um, to improve this motor, to make it more powerful, uh, maybe you could put some more magnets on either side of these so that the entire length of this copper coil actually experiences a force. Now, that force is called the motor effect, and the motor effect is the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So we could increase the magnetic field strength on this one. Massive solid motor, this one. Uh, huge rotor. It's the power. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Chug, 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 chug. This is a very well built motor. It's got some massive bearings which actually give it some quite quite a lot of inertia. It's got a huge rotor made out of timber that's been cut into circles. It's got a pretty spectacular commutator there, split ring commutator. And the brushes that this student has used are actually carbon rods pushing onto the commutator. Okay, this motor here, you could make motors for science fair projects, very interesting. Uh, people love looking at, you know, things that are moving. And so let's, we've got a switch. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Turn him on, look at that, goes like a little rocket ship. Woo, I really like this motor. It's just got nine rods, which is just sitting loose, which is just sitting loose in those metal holes and it's got some rubber things to stop it sliding backwards and forwards. But notice it spins very, very freely and that's a big tip. When you make a motor, make sure, make sure that it spins freely um, before you put current in, because otherwise it probably won't work. <laughs> Check this one out. And around it goes. What I really like about it is that they're just, he's just used two fidget spinners. <laughs> and he's attached this fidget spinners just to a bracket. It's got a very nice spin to it. Look at that. It's got a beautiful spin to it. Spins quite freely. Oh. Oh, something clicked out. This student has had a problem with the commutator where they've driven nails through the copper sheet, but I think the nails are touching and so there's a short circuit, so there's a problem here with the commutator. What I really like about this motor though is the fact that there's four uh, magnets uh, along the entire length of that coil, which will produce a, a, a strong magnetic field around along the entire length of that coil wire, which will increase the torque quite a lot. Very solid looking contraption. Brushes are a little bit of an issue. It's what students struggle with most, getting these brushes right. So, come on, here we go, here we go, <laughs> here we go. We got it, we got it. Oh, it's getting hot, it's drawing a lot of current this one. Um, to make this one have more torque, yes, instead of using one magnet here, probably two magnets side by side. Uh, it doesn't spin overly freely, and so there's a bit of friction here in the skateboard bearings. But again, a good commutator, a good split ring commutator, nice and solid, not wonky, 
but the brushes are a little bit of an issue. They they're not they're not pushing very well onto the commutator. Here we go. Spinning. Oh, spinning. Okay. The bearing has just been glued onto the wood, which is fine. The commutator is pretty good. Um, it's a piece of uh, circular wood with some copper sheet bent to it and glued on. Uh, the bearings, uh, not the bearings, the, the brushes are again a bit of an issue. They're not making proper contact. Oh, here we've got a little bit of 3D printing uh, with the bearing holders. Woo! These, these have got some bits and sparks happening here. These bearing holders are uh, 3D printed, which is nice. And then, whoa, this big, this big boy. Here we go. Woo! Wow, look at it go. Meow. I like it. I like it a lot. Woo! A commutator is just some uh, copper sheet glued with some five minute, five minute epoxy to the dowel. And the brushes are just some electrical wiring from a house. So I hope these modes have given you some ideas for how to build a better motor yourself. Um, you can incorporate different aspects of each motor to, to make the, the best motor possible. Uh, if you've had success, let me know. Uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to see a photo of it or a link to a video. And um, look, if you found this video helpful, I, I upload every Friday, uh, usually a fun type of video. But uh, I've been doing a weekly science vlog as well as my life as a science teacher. Uh, you can check that out. Um, I usually upload that on a Monday. Um, so I do a week of science, I film the highlights, um, and then I upload the weekly blog. Uh, if you found this helpful, um, comment, please, um, like it. If you, if you don't, haven't liked it, please dislike it, that's fine. I would like to improve my videos, so please, any feedback, more than welcome. Okay, alright, bye for now.